Follow me over here, you'll see we're right across the street from the Shaw Metro Station. Come another block over, we're right in front of the Shaw Library. And see, I'm standing on top of where this railing and this concrete wall would normally take you out into this park. Not only was he an officer, not only did he work part-time security at the Applebee's back here, but he also volunteered with a youth program. Move over to Europe where they've been open about three hours now, also down between about one and three percent. And as you pointed out, U.S. stock futures don't look good either. They were among some 100 152 passengers on board American Airlines Flight 734, which was forced to make an emergency landing. It is 827 and Philip Stewart topping our news this Sunday. Police in Prince George's County are investigating an early morning homicide. Show that apparently more and more people are going into bars or clubs and then coming out to their cars after they've had a drink, getting inside and then getting behind the wheel and trying to drive home. In many cases, like you see up there, they're all tangled together, so it's making it even more difficult to make the repairs. Storm. One other note, and it's it's about sandbags, and that is related to Metro. Metro tells us they will be placing sandbags at what they're calling key locations. The pipe underground has been fixed, but take a look back here behind me. You'll see this has now turned into a paving operation. Claims of police brutality in the video, some say, backs up those claims. I'm Philip Stewart live in College Park. We'll show you that video coming up. Hey there, I'll step out of the way here and show you. Take a look behind me. You can see this big tree back here into this house. We're on Greg Street. A couple of the people inside overnight, about seven of them, about half were sleeping, half of them were awake. They say about midnight they heard this loud crash. That's when this tree came down. They came outside and finally were able to take a look at this. They've been up, as you can imagine, since then. No one went back to bed. They told us that the uh, fire company came out here, cut off the power box there that you can see and taped that off across the uh, front of the yard there. But you know what's concerning about this is that tree is still leaning on those wires up there. And you can see on your screen there, it's leaning to the left. That is all also, generally, the direction that the wind is blowing right now. So, you know, some of these homeowners here have real concerns that since this is only really halfway down, they're concerned that it could come down even further. So they're obviously waiting for uh, power crews and some people to come out here to try to help them out. If I want to show you one other thing over here that we noticed, and that's down here. We have not moved this since we got here because I want to show you where this blew from. We got this shutter that came off of a house. It matches the shutters on this house over here, there's a white house down here, right next door here, a white and brick house you can see. So at some point over the course of the evening, this blew away. We also want to tell you a little bit about the drive out here. You know, we've been asking some people, you know, what have the roads been like? What kind of damage are you seeing? It hasn't been too bad, but perfect example of why you need to use caution here this morning. My photographer, Dale Wright, is driving, coming up Kenilworth Avenue. We're in the right-hand lane, came around a bend, and there was just a huge pool of standing water. It had been taped off sort of with some cones so we had some time to see it but it was dark that po portion of uh, roadway didn't have many lights and that was the perfect example of why when you're out even though it's getting light today you might be coming around a bend you might be coming around somewhere where you can't see that far in front of you and you come up on standing water and it was something that we could not have safely driven through luckily we were able to deal with that but again live look here at this house this is just one example we've seen a couple of trees down out here we understand at last check about 2,000 people in this immediate community, specifically in this zip code portion of Seat Pleasant, without power right now. Obviously, this will be one of many areas today where crews are going to be out having to make some repairs. Sine Scott? I just pray every day that it never happens to me, but this one day it did. Salithia Cole, an 11-year Metro veteran, was behind the controls Monday morning when frantic passengers called from emergency intercoms. I stopped the train because I know something is going on because it's like everybody is calling and screaming. Riders reported a passenger with a bomb. With the train stopped, Cole called for help and tried to calm passengers as she prepared to walk back the length of the train to find out exactly what was happening. You always say in situations like this what you will do, but you never really know until it happens to you. For some reason, I was just more calmer than I've probably ever been in my life. But 911 calls reveal what concerned Cole even further. Passengers jumping off the train down onto the tracks. Tracks charged with some 750 volts of electricity. A bunch of people have forced their way out through the front of the train. They're coming out the emergency doors. They're like jumping out of the emergency doors. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm more scared now than I think I was throughout the whole situation. Nearly three dozen people had left the train. Contact with a highly charged third rail would be deadly. Cole immediately radioed Metro Control and had all power shut off. 
It was a split-second decision that could very well have saved lives. But Cole isn't taking much credit. In fact, she's grateful to passengers. I feel like they helped me too with all the information that they gave me. Because out their information, I wouldn't have been able to do my job. An appreciative train operator who truly kept calm under pressure. In Rockville, Philip Stewart, ABC 7 News. Leon, first and foremost, we want to let you know that everyone got out of this apartment building okay. But because it's Christmas Eve, there are virtually no stores open. So these people who are affected can't even go buy anything that they might need, even just for one night. Really, the timing of this fire couldn't have been worse. I have time to throw stuff off the balcony. I just ain't have time to do anything. It is difficult for Erica Ford to hold back tears. Her and her four-year-old daughter's apartment is one of 40 left uninhabitable this Christmas Eve following a three-alarm fire in Camp Springs. News Chopper 7 was over the courts of Camp Springs apartments this afternoon just before 2 when the flames tore through the roof of the three-story complex. It took nearly 100 firefighters more than an hour to get the blaze under control. They couldn't save nothing. My gifts, everything is just gone so our Christmas is just I don't know. We're going to make sure she's okay. You know, it's, it's Christmas. <laughs> Jamelia Penny Bullock lives on the first floor. The Christmas presents for her three sons, which she borrowed money to buy, were in her home. It's still an apartment. I have one, one gift in my trunk. Yep. But in the true spirit of giving this Christmas Eve, the Red Cross and Prince George's County Fire Department brought toys to a nearby church. These, along with a handful of presents retrieved by the firefighters from the apartments, will be distributed to the families. But even without the presents they bought or even a home, families like Erica's are grateful there's a Christmas to celebrate at all. She's okay, I'm okay, and it's just a blessing, I guess, because we are still here. Now, those affected are either staying with friends and family or they're being helped out tonight by the Red Cross. We should also mention that one firefighter suffered second and third degree burns, but tonight, Leon, he is listed in good condition at Washington Hospital Center. We're live in Camp Springs tonight. Philip Stewart, ABC 7 News. All right, good deal. Thanks, Phil. Some of them just kind of hit home, and some just bring back a lot of memories. They captured just a moment in time, but they are the news photos that shaped the world in 2010. You can put a whole storyline beside each one of these. Today, the museum unveiled its Pictures of the Year exhibit. For the 68th year, judges at Pictures of the Year International selected the best photos from 2010's high points and some of the most tragic. That's what the judging tries to encapsulate, are those um, moments that span the human emotion. They range from troops on the front lines overseas to the excitement of the Olympic Games to a fashion model walking the runway in Paris. Some visitors spend several minutes taking in every detail of a single shot. To get um, the human element, like, you know, the expressions on the people's faces are just incredible and it's, you know, just so true and real. This exhibit obviously taps into a very traditional kind of journalism, photojournalism, but they're also using new media as well with your smartphone. Scan one of these, you can get lots more information about some of these photos. You can download a deeper content about each of the pictures that we've put those codes next to. So we call these extended exhibit labels, and they take you to uh, a story that each photographer wrote about how they got the shot. And whether captured on film or snapped by a digital lens, these split seconds scenes don't just tell but show the story of the year that was. Pictures Why? speak volumes. Just does versus words being spoken. I get more out of the picture. In Northwest, Philip Stewart, News Channel 8.